just says starting. Oh, there we go. So, nope, it did not pop up on YouTube. Rude as shit. Oh, I got a little, oh, this is live. Um, I oh. And then it was going to be on YouTube. Did it? Oh, I got a group chat thing, but it's on Hangouts and not on YouTube. So, I can't see anybody's messages. Hold on. Maybe if I actually turn it on on YouTube over here. Are we on YouTube? <laughs> oh, that's annoying as fuck. Okay, so I had to open up a YouTube window over in the side to be able to see it. And there's like a 30 second lag. So I'm in my own ear talking like twi uh, no. <laughs> that's I muted it. So let's see if I can see the comments, though, which is all okay, really yeah. Boring. I and just did really the same rain here. So it's going to be a rainy morning broadcast. That's okay. It's kind of dreary here, so it works. I wish. Like, my roof. It rained inside yesterday. Oh, no. Like, it was 7 in the damn morning. <laughs> I was awake putting bowls out. It sucked. No. Yeah, oh, I can see comments. Hi, guys. Oh, well, hello. I don't see comments. Hi. I only see two. I see Latasha and yeah, see Latasha has been promoting Hi. a lot. I think I, is going to join it. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep that open to the side ish. Okay. Because I can't listen. Ah, Bree's here. Hi, Bree. Bree. Hey, girl. Hey. All right. So, see if we get a couple more people pop in. There. Now I can see us live and then I have YouTube. This is so extra. So I have like YouTube open on one side, muted, and hangouts over here. I did the same thing. <laughs> Good Jesus. There's got to be a more efficient way to do this. I just have my phone because my computer didn't work. <laughs> for face. I don't see anything else. Watch it like pop up like just as soon as everybody gets in. It's going to be like, oh, look, we're going. <laughs> I'm just going to apologize for everyone here. If I pull out tissue, I'm sick, so. Oh, yeah, I have a sinus infection. I am I am all uh, hopped up on all kinds of medicine. Oh, so all three of us. Fabulous. <laughs> it's going to be a hot mess morning, and I'm into it. That's all right. That's all right. It's only, it's 1014 here, and I have whiskey in my tea, so. <laughs> that shows you what, what kind of fuckery he's about to get into. I love it. Hi, Tabby. And Denisha's here. Tabby. Look at that, people coming. It's awesome. Yay. <laughs> hi, Tabby. I can't see what you're saying, but I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> Everybody's just saying hi. Denisha, hey. she's got a notification when it popped up on her phone. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, cool. I didn't even set that up, but you know what? Whatevs. It works. I'm here for it. Tea and whiskey so long. Yep, that is my brand. That is my brand. <laughs> when I feel really shitty. And I really just want to drink and to go to bed. And I was on night shift. I would just put my whole cup of whiskey in the microwave and dunk a tea bag right in that bitch. <laughs> so extra. That's one way of doing it. I don't think I've ever had hot whiskey before. It's not a good idea because it smells like it, the alcohol just wafts up and it smells like straight up isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Like it's not cute. <laughs> not, not even a little bit. Okay. Sorry if you can hear all of that in the background. I'm not home alone, so. We're good. We're good. Okay. Um, little brother's getting yelled at right now, so. Uh-oh. Yeah. We can't hear it. Lucky for little brother, because I'm nosy. Okay. I'm like, ooh, what you do? <laughs> all right. So, guys, looks like we got a good amount of people popping up in the comments. This is awesome. Yay. So, those of you who are here before for Wicked Twitter's book club, because I am an awkward idiot and I hated doing this by myself and I wanted to get more people who are into paranormal romance and urban fantasy, I asked Amanda and Brandy to join me. So it's the three of us now and it's so awesome. It's not just me talking to myself and feeling really stupid about it. So. <laughs> Yay! Yay! All right. Tabby said I didn't read the book, but y'all are entertaining, so I'm here to watch. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Are we allowed to do spoilers? Because I feel like it's a book club. Yep. Like, yep. All right. So prepare okay. to be spoiled. Yeah, because I have all kind of things to get into yeah. with this Oh, one. yeah. Me too, girl. But Usually like, it's two yeah. books, so it's hard because I go back and forth when I remember shit. This time we just <laughs> got the one book, so just go for it. So the book for this month was 
First Grave on the Right by Dorinda Jones. It is part of the Charlie Davidson series. And, ooh, girl. So, who wants to go first? <laughs> well, how many stars did everyone give it? Let's start off with that. Initially, I gave it three, but I'm already rethinking that because after letting it sit some more, I'm just like, it wasn't. It wasn't really great at all. So um. yeah, I give it three as well because I'm like, it wasn't horrible, but like, I've seen it done better. <laughs> so, like, I this is a reread for me. So I read it before, but I read it before I was on BookTube, and I say this a lot. BookTube has made me very fucking critical. I mean, I was already critical. But I used to read a lot of Kindle Unlimited books, so I just let a lot of bullshit slide. So when I read it the first time, I was like, oh, yeah, this is entertaining. And I just gave it five stars. And then this time I read it, I was like, bitch, what was you smoking? <laughs> well, I think we're all like, I feel like, at this point, you know, we read yeah. a lot of urban fantasy. Like, we know what to look for now. Like, I think an average reader who doesn't read a lot of it, they're just going to be like, yeah. I'm like, we about to run out of books already. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> So, first grave on the right. It takes place in Albuquerque. I didn't know that. I haven't read a book that took place in Albuquerque before. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the first for me, too. I always like reading books from new locations because I'm like, I read about the locations in the book and then, like, I straight up Google them. I'm like, is it real? Is that a real place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I did that with the um, Mercy Thompson series when I moved here. Like, all the places that are mentioned in the book, like my stupid ass not the tri-cities area because apparently that's like five hours from here but when she came into seattle in the alpha alpha and omega series like the troll bridge and i just i wanted to go look and oh, my yeah. mom was here with me and she was like how'd you find out about that and i was like you know this book i was reading she was like seriously lauren seriously yeah, <laughs> but yeah so like yeah, i went to new orleans and i went around town looking for places that i found in books and like i would want to go to new orleans purely for the um I want to see if the sanctuary is there. I mean, I know it's not there, but I just want to go point out a place and I'm like, I feel like that's the sanctuary. You yeah. can't tell me it's not. I, okay. yeah. I was like, that building looks right. Like, I took a bunch of pictures of like, that building looks like this could be this building. Mm -hmm. And then like, Kathy Damon from like, you know, um, Dark Hunters series. Mm -hmm. I was like, he got hit by a Mardi Gras float there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so like first grave on the right though. This is the it was already when I picked it like tetchy going for me the first time I read it because the subject matter in and of itself is a little corny. Like I really wasn't here the first time for the whole Grim Reaper thing. I was like, that's one of those weird like urban fantasy, there are like three or four things I feel like you just really can't get away with. Like we already accept a lot of crazy shit like vampires, werewolves and blah blah blah. Yeah. But like angels are hard to do dragons are hard to do and like stuff like the grim reaper like major figures so to speak i feel like that's one of those weird ones so i already was like eh. the first time i thought she got away with it this time and not so much yeah there was a lot of info dumping mm -hmm. it's just like i think a reaper and also i could do this and then also i could do that and like long chapters of her explaining why she does this and it's like don't info dump like we, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go but like I like I did like the premise though because actually I haven't read like a Grim Reaper book before that I that can remember mm -hmm. so I thought the premise of like I'm a ghost talking PI and I'm the Grim Reaper it's like great urban fantasy like plot maker like I thought like it was a good like idea mm -hmm. right I don't know if it was executed well <laughs> yeah, yeah I thought it could have been done so much better just because like. I get the ghosts were helping her solve a lot of the things that was going on, but at the same time, it was just like, you could have done something else. Or the fact that she was like doing a lot of stupid stuff just because she was just like, oh, I am the Grim Reaper, so mm -hmm. I can do these things. Or I can have these ghosts do this little thing, but then I'm going to go and, and go possibly sacrifice myself for just this little tidbit of information. She gets beat up a lot. Like, she fell through a roof because she was stupid and was on a roof. Like, <laughs> girl. And like it was like classically just oh uh, it was like she's like the person in the horror movie that trips in the woods and you're just like bitch that we still on concrete yet we ain't even in the what you trip over like goddamn <laughs> it's horrible and it like the the guy that pushed her to the window and he, he ended up being like the kid she was trying to help it's like a teenager essentially killed you like several times in this book it's kind of a, a bit much 
I also feel like they pushed, she, I feel like the author pushed the, uh, a couple of her narratives she was trying to come across with. I think she pushed them a little hard, like the whole angel being the 13 year old gangster thing. I was like, that just didn't work well for me. It just, yeah, I kind of just put him off to the side. I'm just like, he popped up randomly. I was just like, oh, okay, you're back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Potential for the character. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to be more of like a little shit. Like he could have been really funny, yeah. which is odd saying, mm -hmm. you know, something else could have been funny because I felt like the author put so much time trying to come up with witty quips. <laughs> that, like something that wasn't funny should have been funny. <laughs> That's the other thing that I feel like she pushed really hard. I was like, we get it. You want her to be snarky and funny, but you are playing this shit to death. Let a line breathe. Fuck. Like, now is not the time for the joke. Let her have an emotional moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, because the thing with Charlie is that she uses humor as, like, a coping device. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that was, like, a purposeful choice by the author to keep pushing these jokes because that's how Charlie thinks. But it doesn't really endear the reader to her because we need to see her vulnerability. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was like on purpose or not. Ooh, Brie up brought up a good point because I was just thinking about, you know, when she was describing, I can't think of his name now, was the, the dog the bounty hunter dude when she was trying to explain what he looked like. And she said something along the lines of he had a certain skin tone and a certain eye color that made him look like a hybrid. I was like, what? Yes, 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 yes. That irritated the crap out of me. And it was like any time any person of color was brought up, it yes. was like some out of the way thing. I was just like, it was like, okay, she's trying to be like, okay, I got this person in, got a black person in, got a Hispanic person in, mm -hmm. I got a Native American person in, but let's describe them in the most out of the way possible thing. And I was just like, lady. Uh, yeah, no. So, like, <laughs> what Brie brought up was a specific quote when she was like, it's like the pot calling the kettle African American. I was like, <laughs> what did you just say? Wait a minute. Sure. No, this bitch didn't. So, it's like, so you can't, like, in one sentence call the man a hybrid, and then another sentence you're like, I really need to be politically correct and say, you know, it's a pot calling the kettle African American. It's like, oh my God, what the fuck am I reading? And why didn't I catch this the first time I read it? I feel like she tried to push the ethnic characters a bit hard. And it was the same thing with Angel. I was like, you could have had, like, you tried to make him, like, a, thir a really young badass, like, a little bit too much, I think. I think there was a way to do it, maybe. Or maybe she shouldn't have made him, like, quite, like, he's a 13-year-old that stole a car and got shot in a drive-by or some ridiculous shit like that. I'm like, that happens, but it's like you picked each and every little crazy-ass part of that and just lumped them all into one character. And then he was like a little pervert on top of it. I'm like, okay, so either he's a really good kid who didn't want his friend to steal a car and somebody else to get shot, or he's a little ass white. <laughs> Which one is it? Well, I mean, he's I kinda, be Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's how I was like. He was 13. So I kind of like kind of was like, OK, at mm -hmm. that age, some little boys are like that, especially growing up how he grew up. I'm like, mm -hmm. he's probably one of them look he is just like that because I've met some like that. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, really, really? Yeah, I need to grow up. But I mean, when I was 13, I was obsessed with boobs, too. I think everyone is like <laughs> <laughs> it is. But it's the or maybe I'm getting him mixed up with the rest of the books, because I think when I read the series, I binged it to like book eight or nine. But like, it's kind of annoying that he never grows out of that 13 year old mentality. Now, granted, he died at that age and you kind of but Maybe that's not that what yeah. yeah, that's not one of the things that freezes, I think. So it's like, it's kind of like having that vampire character that was turned when they were 12 and they're just like forever immature. It's like, it doesn't work like that. Because there are some teenagers that have been through shit and they've grown as hell at like 13, 14, 15. So right. he, for him to be still childish, but he was also like, he was dealing with the fact that he was dead. He was taking care of his mom. He was doing all this other responsible shit. But then he's also like trying to peek on her in the shower. And I'm like, okay, what? what? <laughs> Did, did anybody else find it weird how there was so many bad things that happened to her in her life? Was that because she was the Grim Reaper or? Yeah, she's like, like lightning rod of horrible. Good grief. Yeah, so like when they were talking about all the times that the big bad saved her and it was like, well, I almost got kidnapped this one time and I almost got gang raped this one time and I almost <laughs> fell in the wood chipper when I was nine and a half. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
Texas. <laughs> It's like that. nobody's luck is that bad. And that is the problem that I have with reading darker stories sometimes. And I don't think this is a darker story. But when you have a character and you want to just make them like badass or hard ass for whatever reason, and you know, bad shit happens to people. But nobody is ever like that much of a lightning rod. It's like, OK, you got assaulted when you're a child. And then again, when you were this and then again and then again and then again, it's like. That's a lot. Yeah, especially when she grew up in a stable environment. Right. She wasn't in like. A group home like she was growing up with a mother and a father well the mother was kind of a cunt but mm. she's probably dropped the c-bomb already but back to it you know that that one scene i felt was really extra when um she told the lady whose daughter had died like you know i she's over there and her stepmom got so mad and she like smacked the piss out of her in front of the whole town i was like all right yeah, why did the, no one else in town go, whoa, 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 you're not supposed to hit kids? Right. right. Like, even her dad didn't say anything. Like, the whole time, they was just like, well, he was starting to believe her, but he never confronted the stepmom about anything that she did. Mm -hmm. Not just like you let her grow up her entire life with this grown lady doing whatever and saying whatever to her. Like, really? Yeah. Come on, man. And then the <laughs> sister, too. Like, yeah. it was just a lot. Laura, you've read more books. Is, is Does the stepmom have, like, a reason for this? That, is she, like, actually, like, a demon or something? Not that I'm aware of. Like, not far. So she's just, like, one of those weirdo people. Like, kind of how they had Swopes in the beginning. They just made him go, like, from the two extremes to, like, he thought she was crazy. And then, then all of a sudden he was like, ooh, bitch, tell my future. Like, give me the lotto <laughs> numbers. Like, which <laughs> is really a lot. But she's just didn't believe in any of that shit and then i guess it just made her a jerk she never like as far as i can remember she didn't have like a redemption arc she didn't have like a really solid reason for it she was just like you and this grim reaper shit's freaky as fuck and i don't like it well i mean it is <laughs> like if your child was a grim reaper i'd be freaked out too but oh no little damien would have had to go you put up for adoption <laughs> we can't do this my <laughs> child in public but yeah i'd be freaked out but, like, I don't know. I don't know if that's, like, an interesting choice just because, like, you know, sometimes people are just bastards for no reason. Yeah. Like, interesting, like, narrative choice or not. But I'm, like, as a human, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. And I also think, like, to have so many bad things happen to her anyway, throwing the stepmom in there was a bit much. I feel like there should yeah. have been some good to balance the bad. Instead, like, this lady's life is just a complete shitstorm from, like, A to Z. And then she's just, like, do 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 whatever like she's got no mental hang-ups about it except for like the weird snarkiness that is just didn't get pulled off very well i think yeah and then with like the world building i feel like there are some inconsistencies with the not the magic per se but she just like certain shit with the ghost didn't make sense and i think it did get better later but i don't think it was a i plan to explain this over the course of several books i think it was a Whoops, let me write this and me fix it in like book three. So like with the ghosts, um, randomly like they could all of a sudden do all this other random shit. Like the aunt that was making coffee that she could drink. Like where in the hell did that come from? But or was I the only one? I think yeah. it was like an empty cup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, She was just like, oh yeah, I hate drinking this imaginary coffee. Like, <laughs> let's <laughs> tell her. Like, Party hey. Girl, like, mm, pink tea. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just like, you know what? I like my coffee better. I'm gonna make my own. Yeah. She go the whole day without her coffee just because her aunt popped in. It's like, hey, I made your coffee. She Let's see. Coffee are popping in. Latasha says, I thought we would have had some type of conversation with her and her dad about being able to see dead people. I think that does happen later. I think it's a half ass conversation, but I think it happens in later books. <laughs> I think. I'm sorry, I just read Bree's comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sipping ghost made coffee. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Amanda. I forgot you can't see the comments. My bad. I know, I'm just like staring, what's happening? <laughs> so, I, I, for people in the chat, I had some technical difficulties where my computer decided to update and then just didn't turn on. So I'm on my phone. <laughs> But luckily, my phone is working really well for this, but, like, I can't see any of the comments. Yeah. So I'm just trusting so, everyone else to tell me that things are funny. <laughs> so, okay. Um, going back a bit, because I do like to read all of the comments. Um, Latasha said, I like the Grim Reaper P.I. stuff, but wish it was better. Ooh, girl, me too. 
Sophia said, reading Alona Andrews ruins other urban fantasy for me. T. She yes. says, though, Patricia Briggs <laughs> and Kelly Armstrong stand up to rereads. Okay. So, like, Patricia Briggs, I acknowledge that her world is not as... Now, this is where I went off on a tangent. So, y'all got to shut me up because every other time we do these videos, I... I go down the Alona Andrews track and the whole train just goes left. Yeah, I haven't read either of these authors yet, so. Really? I know, I have some. I think I have the, I have the first Alona Andrews, uh, Magic Bites, is, it, is that what it is? We've I have that one. Yeah, divorce. Magic Bites. It's not divorce. You gotta read all of it. I'm gonna make you a box. Like, I made Amanda a box that's still sitting <laughs> <laughs> I got Amanda the the what is it Sherilyn Kenyon's historical romance books. I'm gonna get you the um, matter of fact. I got one. I, I'm not finna look on these shows. I can't find shit. I'm gonna send you the Alona Andrews books. I'll even do the. Also, we can start with the Edge books because they're not. You don't have to read them in order, and you don't have to read all of them. It's better mm -hmm. than like trying to jump into like a ten book series because I haven't even read all of her novellas in the world because some of them characters I don't give a shit about, but. I acknowledge that per uh, Percy Thompson, what the hell? Mercy, <laughs> <laughs> Mercy Thompson's world is not as good as Lona Andrews, but it's something about that character that I really like. And I think it's that she's so anti like everything. Like if Selena Sardothian's character wouldn't have been such a fail for me, like Mercy Thompson is that of the urban fantasy world. She's like the opposite of everybody else. She's a mechanic. Like she sees herself as being not attractive. She's not a Mary Sue. She gets her ass whooped frequently. And there's like no magic healing about it. So that's why I like Mercy so much, but I do acknowledge that Alona Andrews characters kick ass. Like all of them. But it ruins you for other ones because you're like, I've seen Alona Andrews do it better. Mm hmm every time. But like I went through Kate Daniels though. I think yeah. I left. So like for me, Alona Andrews and Patricia Briggs are like, eh, and then everybody else is like, eh. Like <laughs> And I get so mad. So I'm like, ooh, a new urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. Next. <laughs> and it's never good to me anymore. And it wasn't like that until I read um, the Kate Daniel series. Yeah. Trashed me. Shame. Um, Let's see. Anime 25259. Girl, I got trifocus on. I'm sorry. I got the squint. It says, saw a review on Goodreads that likened it to white chocolate. Some people love it. Other people hate it. I have to agree. It was close to two star for me. I get that because like the first time I read it, it was five star. And this time I'm like, can I give a half star on Goodreads? That should be a thing. <laughs> it should be a thing. Mm -hmm. Books that don't even get a star or they should let you like deliberately pick zero stars. Like that's rude. And like that would probably fuck up people's average very badly, but at the same time, like some books, I feel like just deserve it. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Sophia said, "Oh no, nope, I read that one already." I like Loki Jessica Jones vibe, but yeah, could have been okay. So I'm the shittiest comic book fan ever because I have not watched Jessica Jones. I haven't either. I've been in an orphan black hole for the past couple weeks. If you guys have not watched it, you should go watch it. It's on Amazon. Orphan so, Black. I haven't watched Orphan Black. I started Orphan Black. I've only seen like one episode. I'm really like, I've gotten to the point where I can't really sit still for TV much. So unless it's Drag Race, I have no idea what the hell is going on. Drag Race is literally the only show I will watch as it's coming on, and bitch, you cannot talk to me. Don't text me. Don't ask me no questions. Don't talk to me. The drag race is over. Nothing. I go on Twitter every Friday night because I'm like, what's Lauren saying about drag race? <laughs> I don't know where to watch it. I know everybody's been talking about it, but I don't. This is where my TV would be above me, but it's mm -hmm. not up. So if it's not online somewhere, then I don't know where to watch it. So I don't even have cable, yo. I have Xfinity internet, right? And I want to watch the show so bad that I add Xfinity live stream, which turns out to be like an extra $30 a month. Every month that either All Stars or a new season of like the baseline drag race is on. So like half of the year, my internet bill goes from like 80 bucks to like 130. I'm not even upset mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> I'm not even mad. What? I'm broke as shit, but I'm like, whatever. I need to watch Drag Race. This is not a game. It's fine. What network does it come on? VH1. 
Okay. It used to come on logo. This is how obsessed I am with Drag Race, right? So, like, it used to come on logo, which for a little while, logo, which is um, a lesbian and gay channel. I don't. It's an LGBTQ channel, but I don't remember what logo stands for. If it stands for anything, but <laughs> when it first started coming on, it came on logo. Logo for a little bit it came on like basic cable, and then it didn't. So imagine me having to go tell my black ass parents, "Can we order logo?" And they were like, "What's that?" And I was like, "It's the gay channel." And they were like, "For what?" It's like, "Cause I want to watch Drag Race." And they're like, "The fuck is wrong with you?" And it's like, "Just order it, please." So I'm pretty sure they thought I was gay, like for like five or six years. I don't give a shit. Whatever. I want to watch my show and you can kiss my ass. Okay, we've had a couple questions about the romance. Are you guys ready to get into oh, that? Oh God. Okay. I have a lot of things to say. <laughs> uh, I don't think any of us appreciated any of the romance in this You're at all. Right. Okay, I want Amanda to start because from the time we started this book, she finished it first and she was just like, bitch. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you need to get here now because I have things to say. <laughs> I, I would please, I, please, I want to hear this. Okay. Reyes, are we supposed to like this guy? Because I have zero like for Reyes. I, he, why is he the love interest? Their whole relationship is built on questionable consent. Mm. All of it. When they yeah. first meet, like, she's 14 and he grabs her by the pussy and threatens to rape her. It's like, that's not a meet cue. Oh, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> like, that is a rocky start already. And you know what? He was like maybe 15 or 16 when that happened and he was mm -hmm. trying to get her away from an abusive father. If that was the only problem... I may have been able to get over it because they were kids and it was a fucked up thing to do, but he's not really like that now. However, his whole thing is like he comes to her in dreams and then bangs her. Yeah. And the thing is, <sighs> Charlie thinks they're dreams and she never saw the guy's face. Yes. He fully knows they're not dreams. And he's just banging her without asking, like, permission. So, like, and then when she finds out that it's him, him, she's just like, okay, I'm all for that. And I'm just like, no. No. I don't care how good he fucks you. It's not okay. <laughs> but, like, so here's my issue with that. Because I've seen, like, the dream trope thing done very well. So when I first came across the whole, when they met when she was 14, 15, whatever, I was like, okay, that's. That's a little weird, but both of y'all are fucked up teenagers and stupid, so we'll put that, like, right on the line, and we'll see if you move it, like, either way. But then, like, she had these dreams, and I'm like, I thought you just said you were terrified of this person, because he shows up as, like, this horrible shadow. You've never seen his face. You don't know what he is, but you also want to fuck him. I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Where did that come from? <laughs> and then the dreams are, like, they're not even, they're she not made sexy, it. like, even a little bit. But then she like made out with his body while he was in a coma too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's just like, oh, okay. So like when she started freaking out and she was like, oh my God, he's going to be, they're going to take him off life support. Like, you don't know this man. You saw him once when you were 14 and you think maybe he's the man you've been dreaming about and you don't even know if it's like your dreams are like actual occurrences as far as you know you've just been dreaming about the man but you like you ready to like go fucking protest like handcuff yourself to his bedside like no we can't take him off the life support can you calm the fuck down just a little bit yeah. she, just, she just seemed like one of those women who just see like a guy's mugshot and then becomes like a uh, I was gonna say a PayPal, Jesus, a pen pal, and just like writes them while they're in prison and just Why like, you marry you him when you get out. Yeah, <laughs> can you calm the fuck down? Oh man, yeah, she was, and then I'm like, you had a perfectly live human, Gary. He was clearly into her, but she was just like, you mean no, the hybrid, hybrid oh, Gary? I'm sorry, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> he wasn't even, he doesn't even have a full, uh, you know, full man status, but. So, like, okay, one thing that bugged me about Swopes, too, and I know it's irrelevant in this book because it happens later, is that if you've read the, I don't know if either of you've read the Janine Frost uh, Night Hunter series. I need to. I have to. <laughs> first, I read the first two. Okay, never mind. This reference is irrelevant then. He kind of turns into a character from that to where he's just like, I know you're in a relationship, but I have no respect for that whatsoever. And he just gets um. kind of pushy. Yeah. It's only like one instance in this book, but it's enough to make me go, man, come on. You're the one black character. One. You got to be a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, and a side note that has nothing to do with the main plot, but the little demon child that was mentioned that was following the one cop around. Oh, yeah. See, I was just like, this little girl. I was ready to like punt her. I was like, you need to, you need to go. She's like, he doesn't want to stay with me anymore. It's like, oh, okay. I know, it's like nine year old fatal attraction. (laughs) Girl. I also feel like his reaction, the, that cop's particular reaction, was like super extreme. Yeah, and I'm like, um, you're a cop and you almost hit her. Yeah, like that was that was a bit much. Like, if anything, I feel like most people would be like, well, clearly she's crazy, so we're just gonna let Lil Craig Grace stay in her house, and I'm gonna leave you with your uncle. Bye. <laughs> uh, Jesus, but yeah, like going back to the romance with Ray, it's like I did not feel any kind of like it just was not believable in the least bit because she went from quote unquote being terrified by this person to like having these dreams and still being terrified by this person to all of a sudden just like championing for this person like to like a crazy high degree and being completely obsessed with them and in love with them and i'm like i have no understanding where this came from none yeah none. yeah you better yeah. want to grab her by the pussy like <laughs> And then the moment where he popped up into the office and like made out with her in front of the other ghosts and they were all standing at her like, oh, that was hot. And she was like, did y'all see that? And they're like, no, you were just standing there. So I'm like, well, then what the fuck are you reacting to? Like, it was just so weird. Like the writing didn't make any sense right there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I like this so much. But when I tell you, I stuck through this book through like nine or 10 books up until like as many as were out at the time and then it got really weird and considering where the book started it got really really weird and I was like well wow okay <laughs> yeah I ended up getting the audiobook for like the last portion of it because I was just like I can't continue to read this I was reading it for like two weeks and I was only at like 40% <laughs> and I just could not do it because it was just like what you were talking about earlier anytime any moment that came up where she could have any sort of feelings, it was just like, okay, we're going to make a sarcastic comment and keep on going. And I was just like, what's the point? You know, I can't connect to you if you get a sarcastic comment for every little thing that happens. It was just ridiculous. Wait, so like, how was the audio book though? Because I feel like listening to all those comments would make me want to stab myself in the eardrum. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was okay. Like the audio book, I think the narrator is the same narrator who does some of the Kate Daniels books. See, I've not listened to any of them. The only one I wanted to listen to was the last one with um, Q because um, now I can't think of his name. Steve West narrates that book and he's the narrator for Strains of Dreamer and that man's voice, sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> listen to it <laughs> you have to listen to that book like i didn't even think i was gonna like that book reading it and it was incredible but like steve west baby i'm glad <laughs> <laughs> i ran out of tea no or whiskey <laughs> i ran out of whiskey too that was like the last of my whiskey in my teeth i was like mm. <laughs> travesty Okay, let's see what everybody else is saying. Um, Natasha said, yes, why didn't she go for Garrett? I'm assuming she didn't like hybrid. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't let that go. It pissed me off. <laughs> uh, she says to read it in two days, but it was hate reading. Uh, agreed, agreed. Yeah, I just powered through it. I was like, yeah. I, this needs to be over. Like, I'm I pretty listening to the... It was one of those things where I didn't figure out it was hate reading until I was done. It was like... I needed, it was one of those things where I didn't enjoy it much, but I just needed to figure out what the hell, where she was going with this crazy ass story. Yeah, I just wanted to, like, I liked the investigation part of the story, and Mm -hmm. I was just wanting to know how that ended. That's what I was curious about. See, I started skimming through those because it dragged out, and it's like this. Yes. Though that one, the one was very sad, though. The one, the, that, that kind of touched a little too close to home. The, um, the lady who was trying to leave her husband and then she found out at the end oh. of the book that she didn't actually get away, that the husband killed her and Angel fucking knew about it and didn't say anything and he was like, wow, I was just trying to protect you, kind of. It's like, that fucking sucks. That was the only emotional part of the whole book. It was. It was. And I felt like it was really, like, harsh due to people after this, like, kind of 
still mostly lighthearted book, and then you're like, <laughs> surprise, serious point, right in the fucking face. Right. And the lightning rod for terrible. Yeah. Everything bad happens to her. But I was, I did not need to, it was like, that kind of fucking sucked. Like, she went back to her baby blanket and he killed her. It's like, oh my fucking God, I cannot. That was awful. I didn't care for that. I appreciate that she didn't make a sarcastic comment. Like, if that would have been the moment she made one, like, foot closed, like. Yeah, definitely. So she had good taste enough to let that moment sit. So, so like, what I do like about, so I may try to reread the, books like two three ish and see how i feel because some things that i appreciate that got explained were like that whole like how in the hell reyes is like was also a 13 year old kid somewhere but also this entity that was watching over her since birth and calling her what the fuck was he calling her Dutch. Dutch. Yeah. That is what? the dumbest uh, fucking nickname ever in fucking... Yeah, I don't know what that has to do with anything. <laughs> that, do- that doesn't get explained. It doesn't. It doesn't. At all. No. It's like you think it's because of that moment, but then he called her that when she was born, so it wasn't because of that moment. Uh, so. But I'm thinking because of what he is, like he was a little omniscient, kind of, and maybe mm. he knew that moment was coming. And that's um. why, because they're, they have this like faded mate tropey thing kind of and the way it's done is really corny i really don't know if i'm gonna be able to tolerate it <laughs> this time around mm-hmm. but um they have like this faded mate thing so i'm thinking because didn't they say in this book he's like the son of satan or some shit and i was like that's extreme yeah. like there's yeah. a lot of extremes in this book that you just keep <laughs> dropping like it's yeah. nothing the whole point is he's trying to save her life but if if she's a risk he's gonna kill her <laughs> And she was like, but I can't let him die, though. I was like, bitch, you ain't got no self-preservation whatsoever. Because you tell no, no, me no. you're going to kill me if you don't like it. Maybe you need to take a long nap, baby. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you about to kill me, goddamn. <laughs> okay, somebody says, does uh, did get ex- or does get explained. Okay, because I, oh. I like Bree's comment. She says, nothing sexy about Dutch. Amen. Every time I hear that, I think Dutch of it. I'm like, that's not cute. <laughs> Like, Maybe it's because they use it in a nickname sense. sense. Was that? Like, you know how little kids, like, they say names incorrectly because they don't know how to pronounce them? I was like, uh-huh. they didn't know how to say death, so they said Dutch, but I don't think Dutch is easier to say than death. That was, like, my only thinking. I don't know. The only thing I thought of was that when she was trying to explain her name to him and she just, like, blurted out and he's like, huh, Dutch? But I was like, it's still not yeah, Charlie a Davis. cute enough nickname to stick with through this whole goddamn book. Yes. And the crazy thing about it is this series is still going, like book 13. Yeah, so like where I left off at like book 8 or 9, shit was fucking insane. Like, So I don't watch a lot of teen drama shows because the shit that they do gets a little wild. So like take for instance uh, The Vampire Diaries. Everybody was talking about when Elena finally got with um, Damon. And that's where I started watching because I was like, I ain't got no time for you not be making up your mind, bitch. I skipped straight to the Damon parts. <laughs> but even then, it was like, they're like, will they, won't they? Ah, oh, we can't be together because of this, but surprise, we're going to be together because of this. And then Damon was like, nah, bitch, but we really can't, so I'm going to make you lose your memory. Like, that kind of really extra bullshit. <laughs> yeah, This yeah. series does a little bit of that going forward, and it turns into kind of, Fuck, what is that soap opera? It's not Young and the Restless. It's whichever one that just magically, like, didn't know what the fuck to do. So they're like, hey, bitch, we got vampires and witches now. And I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of, like, it did one of those. It just got really off the rails later. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I have a lot of tolerance for shit because, like, my primary reads of paranormal romance are like, I can dispend disbelief with the best of suspend disbelief with the best of them but this series a little later on just makes me go <laughs> what wait what wait wait time out. i'm sorry what <laughs> like, it just yeah. gets a little wild yeah i didn't like that like charlie kept being able to do everything it's like you can't do everything right and oh i i speak every language that's ever been invented ever and like all these things it's just like why do you do everything like what does that have to do with stuff the language thing that was so haphazardly dropped in it's like, <laughs> like 
BT dubs, I understand everything. Now that that kind of gets explained to it's like I feel like she dropped it in as a kind of a little teaser, but the way she did it in the first book, like it doesn't lead to anything in that book. So it's like it's stupid. But like later on, like whatever it, it gets explained that Reyes is and why they have this link, it it's a good excuse for why she can speak every language. But mm -hmm. I feel like if you were going to explain that this whole been seeing ghosts since she was an infant, uh, uh, speaking of which, another thing that irritated the fuck out of me, she, oh yeah, I remember the day I was born. <laughs> I know, I was like, <laughs> I was no like, one I'm wants to remember this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, none of this. And then because, like, she never mentioned having this great memory over the whole book. She never mentioned being able to explain other languages throughout the whole book. So whenever these instances popped up, they didn't feel like reveals. It felt like the author was like, what the fuck can I put in this bitch now? Oh, I know she can do this. It was just like, I need another 50 pages. We need another plot twist in here. Right. Bree says, is there more dream sex? I can't remember. I don't think so because I think they are physically together for the most part in the rest of the series. But like, so that also means that, like I said, the rest of the book is crazy. So like we find out about the little Mr. What's His Bucket, the ghost that's always standing in the corner like him on Eternal Punishment. We oh, find yeah. out what the fuck he's there for because he's more than a, a lawn ornament or what the fuck. So he's got a reason. <laughs> We find out about that shit. We find out how, like, Reyes was essentially, like, a human and not human at the same time. And it's just, yeah, Mr. Wong, that's his name. So we find out all that stuff. But, like I said, at the time that I read it, I had not yet been introduced to Alona Andrews, who weaves all of her shit there, because it's two of them. They weave all of this shit in, like, they plotted out the whole 10 book series from day one. And it's just, like, fucking flawless almost there was never any part where they dropped some information about a character and i was like no nah, bitch wait a minute wait a minute where'd that come from yeah. the way they do it in this series it just shit keeps popping up it kind of feels like i planned for it to be one book and then they wanted more and i have no idea what to do so it almost has that soap opera e kind of feeling where like um fuck, we accidentally killed everybody. Who can we bring back? Who's got an evil twin? Who's not really dead? Like, who can we make do some bullshit right now? It's got that kind of a feeling to it. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I don't know what an overarching storyline would be for the series. It's, it's just the same thing. Charlie's trying to solve a, a crime with ghosts. It's, it's... Like, what's the overarching plot? Like, so, like, it, it, it... They do stick to, like, a traditionally urban fantasy kind of plot arc and where so like think of Alona Andrews and Mercy Thompson where well not really Mercy Thompson because she doesn't have that one big arc I don't feel like not as much as um Kate Daniels does so Kate yeah. Daniels has that big arc with her dad and whatever yeah and then in each book there's like somebody just so happens to be fucking up shit in Atlanta and then it turns out they tie into whatever that big arc is yeah and this one the two arcs are separate and the individual um the individual, like, the PI shit that she has going on is separate, which kind of annoys me because sometimes it feels like she's like, I want to focus on, like, the thing that might kill me tomorrow. So let's find out if this man is cheating on his wife. And it's kind of, like, a little inappropriate, I think, displacement with that. But the arc is really crazy, and I don't know. I think I'm going to spoil people probably, but I'm going to do it anyway because none of y'all apparently like this motherfucker anyway, so you're not going to finish. I assume it has something to do with her being, like, the portal to heaven. Yeah, with that random at fuck. So <laughs> <laughs> this book was painful this time, and I'm like, why did I give it five stars? But I really didn't want to change it for my initial reaction because everybody's not as judgmental as I am. So, yeah. but I think she and Reyes are some kind of like ancient gods, and they were like linked together. And he was basically waiting for her to be reincarnated or some crazy bullshit like that. Oh, okay. and, I was expecting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah see, like, I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> so she's like some kind of, I forget, but she's something other than a Grim Reaper. She's some kind of god or god of something, goddess of something. I can't fucking remember because my memory sucks. But um, he was essentially like, he went to Earth to hide her slash protect her. And then um, I think later on, they just say fuck it and they get together. But then there's like, oh no, now we're going to have this kid and this kid's a target. So I'm just going to send my baby off to some random portal 
realm with some other people. And that's where I stopped reading because I was like, excuse me, what? It just got really... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was my face too. I, I okay. don't even know what to say to that. But oh, all right. So like the murder mysteries got pretty good because at one there was like um, this serial killer, I think later on and they end up um, discovering this guy has killed a bunch of people on this property somewhere and they go out on this property and finds out um, that this man or this person has been burying bodies there for like generations. And that part actually, she got pretty good at the murder mystery part. But to make up for it, I feel like she kept trying to one up it with the fantasy. That bitch got really wild <laughs> with the fantasy. It was like her and Reyes were not supposed to have this kid. It was like fated to, kid was fated to do something. So now like she's some kind of God and Reyes is a God and they were never supposed to get together because she's the portal realm to a whole bunch of shit. And if she decides to be evil, then she'd fuck up the whole world for some goddamn reason. And then the kid would just make it worse. So they had the kid anyway. Now, mind you, Reyes knew this the whole time. He never fucking tells her this shit. Never tells her. She finds out on her own. And then she's like, excuse me, husband. Like, the fuck, bro? And he's like, I didn't feel like you could handle it. It's really- could he not oh, handle putting on a condom so they didn't have this baby? <laughs> like, uh. yeah, so, like, they had this kid. Oh, this is what's fucked up about it. Because I tolerated it until then, too. So they had this kid, right? And she's like, well, the kid's dangerous. And Mr. Wong, the ghost in the corner, by the way, is some kind of, like, um, guard being that she sent when she still had her memory before she was reincarnated. She sent him there to watch over her. And he wasn't supposed to tell her. So then she goes, Mr. Wong, what the fuck? And he was like, bitch, you told me not to talk. So I just decided to hang out in the fucking corner and pretend to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> why (laughs) like it's really weird like that happens but i think that's not until like book five or six or four or some shit and i'm like bitch what the fuck Uh, and then the whole thing with rez and then they're both some kind of like ancient deities deities what the fuck ever and then they have the baby and so to protect the baby she sends the baby away and then this ignorant cow erases her own memory so she can't remember essentially putting her kid up for adoption and so then in the next book which is like i read like the first two chapters and was like oh i'm done i can't so in that book she's living as a human in some fucking tiny town as an off the books like waitress in a diner getting paid under the table and they're like reyes just starts stalking her in the diner and just pops up because they don't want to like jog her memory too bad and destroy her brain so like the whole time like the the female friend who has a teenage daughter is there and reyes is there and she thinks there are people with totally different fucking names because they're just hanging out in the diner fucking watching her making sure nothing happens to her without telling her who the fuck they are i was just like you know what i think i need a break from this series for a little bit this this, this really does get soap opera that they put in amnesia <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> does someone come back with a mustache now <laughs> <laughs> probably right <Reyes. laughs> <Probably Reyes. laughs> it's like it's fucking ridiculous like i like again like i know um somebody over in the comments is saying she didn't do that on purpose but, like mind you i read this book this series before i started book two so it would have been 2015 or 16 i think it was book eight or nine i stopped at and that's because she didn't have any written yet and then when she started writing the new ones i stopped at the diner thing because i was like i can't fucking take this i'm not mentally prepared now if i made it that far i'm scared to see what the hell is in like book 13 because i don't think I, there's nothing in this cup i don't think i could do it <laughs> yeah i mean i remember when we first start, we first picked the book i got really excited because dorinda jones is doing a tour for like the 13th book mm-hmm. in los angeles in like a couple of weeks <laughs> and i was like she's coming i can go with Oh my god, so Bree's comment. Bree said Reyes is having sex with her inner dreams, but is bad at communication. Okay, got it. <laughs> Accurate. Accurate yeah. as fuck. Just think about the, this is another thing that really just got on my nerves. Is she would just ask him, like, or she would just be begging him, like, you need to come back. They're going to kill you. They're going to unplug you, pull you off life support. And he just look at her and then just vanish. 
And he wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't explain it to her. And it's like the very last time I think he's like, well, no, they'll find you. And then he just left. And he's like, you know, she doesn't know who she is. You know, she has no idea what the fuck's going on. So you're just going to let this silly hoe just keep running around like an idiot trying to save you. And then he just pops up on like a security camera, like waking up out of a coma where he got shot in the fucking head. Just like started unplugging shit, even though he was like in a bed for months and months, just gets up and walks the fuck on out. Like no big deal. It was like, okay, (laughs) whatever. Do we ever get in? It's like, you know what? I just, I just have to go with it. (laughs) (laughs) What what, what, what book were you talking about? Where like, she took like 20 Vicodin and then she was fine the next day. Oh my (laughs) fucking God. (laughs) So it was, yeah, I've been in a coma for like months. But none of my muscles have atrophied. I'm good. <laughs> yes, exactly that. And when that kind of shit happens, I'm like, maybe most people don't immediately think about that. And maybe it's because I'm a nurse. I pick apart the medical shit. But then I'm like, no, that's common sense. <laughs> like the Maya Banks. It was one of the Rush books. I don't know if it's book two or book three. But like her brother was some kind of drug addict or drug dealer. And he put his hot chocolate. Now, mind you, as far as I'm concerned, they just it was a little like regular cup or whatever. And it made hot chocolate. So he didn't crush them, didn't do anything crazy with them, dumped like 20, 30 Viking in, in his cup. And he had made them both hot chocolate and he just set the cups down. She picked up the wrong ones. Now, motherfucker, I don't know if you've ever taken pills or not, but Tylenol was goddamn bitter. And she just drank the hot chocolate, like chugged it back. Didn't taste shit. It wasn't gritty and it had no chunks of pills in it. And then in about 20 minutes, she just like passed out into a coma on the floor. I'm like, first of all, it doesn't work that fast. Second of all, why didn't you taste that shit? Third of all, she went to the hospital and they had to revive her ass. And then they were just like, she woke up and they're like, well, you're awake now. I think we can take you off of life support. It's fine. And they just started unplugging shit. And I'm like, wait a minute, what the fuck? She just swallowed like 30 Tylenol like 45 minutes ago. And now y'all just gonna let the bitch go. All right, I'm Fuck it. Also, why hot chocolate? Like, why is that your method of taking those pills? <laughs> like, if you were going to take them, why didn't you just swallow them? Them. them? Not that I'm advocating doing that, but like, you got to put them in hot chocolate, which is really weird. This is like, there's so many things medically wrong with that because, one, like, if anybody wants to hurt themselves, as far as men are concerned, they don't use like pills and poisons and shit. That's the thing that women do because they don't want to hurt when they do it and they don't want to make a mess. Oh, like already, I was just like, but maybe that's because I'm a psych nurse. I was like, mm, mm, mm. but then like she swallowed all these pills. And if I'm gonna write that somebody has a medical problem, even without being a nurse, why would you not research a medical problem? Like Tylenol fucks up your livers, your kidneys, and Tylenol is in Vicodin. And Vicodin is majority Tylenol and a little bit of hydroconone. So you took 30 Tylenol. Your liver is fucked. You have no liver. It's Swiss cheese. And they're just like, no, nah, I think you're fine now. You were in a coma 35 seconds ago, but we think you're good. Okay. <laughs> I, girl, oh my God, that book made me so mad. And mind you, I shouldn't have been expecting much from a book about, you know, like the BDSM community because people don't research that anyway. But so many problems up until that point. I really should have just, oh, I have such low tolerance for that shit. <laughs> but this was like worse. Like, just like the shit yeah. with the amnesia. And the just the uh. speaking of which, anybody who's read the series, the the rocket and the other ghosts who are in the hospital, does that shit ever get explained? Cause I don't yeah, remember. And that was like rocket. low key random as fuck. Yeah. It was just I know I there's like a it's kind of a cool ghost. He was interesting. It was. It was, but I also still feel like again, that was like another stereotypey kind of trope that she threw in there. Like, I'm gonna go meet this ghost at an abandoned mental hospital because that's where all the fucking ghosts hang out in every book and every goddamn movie ever. But, you know, it's fine. Yeah. There's just so many things. But I still, for some reason, just didn't want to take my rating down because, like, initially I did enjoy it. But now that I'm, like, picking stuff apart, I'm like, ooh, child, this baby. (laughs) I think also you've probably read a lot more books since then. So now you're going back with a different, like, guy's this book you're like oh i didn't know things were bad before because i've read better now okay so sneak was it sneak 015 says rocket only really comes together in book 13 that no sucks yeah no i that's too long (laughs) yeah and see behind me i have how many books do i have from this shit i think the last book i have up here is book 
11 and I didn't read 10 or 11. I think I read part of 10. I don't know. I don't know that I'm even going to bother with 12 and 13 because this, <laughs> this shit just gets worse. What about that freaky, creepy ghost in her apartment complex? The one that apparently her dead aunt was the perverted old man, and now her aunt's banging. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was kind of happy for them. Like, yeah, you okay? <laughs> so slow. <laughs> but, like, well, like, also, like, all of the other ghosts apparently figure it out when they're only been dead a little while. Apparently, this aunt has been dead since Woodstock, and you're not gonna tell the bitch she dead yet, still, right? She was like, I don't think she knows, but I was just like. Why don't you tell her? You the only one to see her. So <laughs> you just gonna let her keep making you coffee, I suppose. All right. Yeah. It's just weird. It's just like I don't know. And again, like I did really enjoy it the first time I read it, but this time this shit was just crazy. I don't know what the fuck happened. I think they are all available to audiobooks on Scribd, so I might possibly, I don't know yet, read or listen to them on there. I still want to find out what's going on with this baby. And I remember something with a well. I think she, this bitch fell down a well. As a matter of fact, I think she, I think she went into labor at the bottom of a motherfucking well. I swear to God. Oh, I can't. Oh, man. I'm pretty sure she did fall down a damn well. I can't with this book. It's like every trope. It's just kitchen sink in that motherfucker. She just threw all of them in there. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt because it's the first book of a long series. So maybe she doesn't know how to write the series yet. And there's a lot of like problems in it, obviously. Yeah. So I might want to read the second book to see if like things get better, but it doesn't sound like it does. <laughs> so okay. it, it might be like the Faith Yellow Rock series or the Jane Yellow Rock series. I'm sorry. That oh. somebody said they don't get good until like book three or four. And I was like, but bitch, this is really bad. I can't make it to four. <laughs> Yeah, that ended up in my worst of 2018 reads because, um, it you know, the premise of that book was okay, but the way which book? Oh, beep! I forgot about that. Does so somebody say, Yeah, she had beep in a well, so she called the baby was beep. Beep. Oh, oh, oh the baby's okay. name is beep. It's the nickname. I don't remember what she called the baby. You know, like most people call their baby like little bean or whatever. She called it beep, like beep beep. <laughs> so, Dutch and beep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we were talking about oh, I didn't forget what the is it Skinwalker is that the uh -huh. first book uh -huh. yeah, that I read the book that. club and I was really excited about I don't know what happened yeah I remember that was the book for the month and I did try reading that along and I was like I, I can't with this <laughs> yeah I got the audio book for that one too because I, I couldn't get into it yeah some it things was... about it were really cool like the I like the whole like the weight displacement thing were like shifting or like you had to put the extra weight somewhere or get it from somewhere or the mass mm -hmm. displacement or whatever but like that was it <laughs> <laughs> it took place in new orleans so yeah i like new orleans but that doesn't the thing that i think remember uh-oh uh -oh. Uh -oh. something it was just like left bleeding say that again brandy you froze for a little bit how I said the thing I remember most is that one officer getting attacked by that beast or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. And he was just like left there. So, so, so I like, know. I read ahead with that series too. Or not read ahead. When a book really ticks me off and I want to know if the series will get better, what I do is I go on Goodreads and I know somebody's going to write a spoilery ass comment <laughs> and not tag it as spoilery. So I go look in the comments, which is what I did for. Uh, um, fucking, what's the the, the red-haired Clary and Jays? I want to know if they was ever going to stop this brother-sister bullshit. <laughs> and they didn't, so I didn't read the books. But, yeah, apparently, like, that whole, the whole, like, thing, like, she was angry with Beast or Beast was angry with her was because she did something fucked up to Beast, but they decided not to even explain that until, like, book three or four. And I was like, all right, bitch, you're doing the most. I can't. Yeah, I kind of caught on to that, but I was just like, it was half explained in that mm -hmm. first book. So I was just like, how am I supposed to know? I mean, I get she took whatever form it was. It was weird. Yeah. The whole book was just weird. It was like they made it into a major trope by saying like she violated her personal space or being or whatever by like shoving her way into like like inhabiting her body without a permission. And I'm just like, all right, y'all are y'all are beating this horse to death, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
like that book too had a little bit of the uh, what's that author Carrie Arthur. She had a little bit of those kind of feelings for me to where like I am not slut shaming at all. However, I do not enjoy reading paranormal romance books where the heroine just like busts it open for whoever the fuck walks around the corner. Like no shame whatsoever, which is fine. But it was I think it's in. Um, in the Jane Yellow Rock series where she's just like, well, I'm in love with this guy. Well, I'm in love with this guy. And they played up the cat thing. And she literally acted like a cat in heat. I'm like, this is getting really fucking old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then I looked ahead and that didn't get resolved until book eight. And I was like, I ain't got that level of patience, Jesus. I can't. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. Nope. Anybody else have any comments on the story? Let's see. Latasha said, what about the officer flirting with the best friend's 12-year-old daughter? Do you know what that? I don't know what that. Mm -mm. I don't remember that. Mm -mm. I don't remember the. I don't know. But I do think it's really, like, inappropriate of the uncle to take her along on these crime scenes just because she can help and she'd be, like, 6, 7, 12. And he's like, I mean, she's fine. She's a grim reaper. She won't be traumatized with it. (laughs) <laughs> well her dad did it first so yeah it's like the <laughs> worst thing. Said, why are you bringing your eight-year-old to this crime scene right there's limbs everywhere like, nobody <laughs> calls cps on this motherfucker it's fine yeah there, there's there, like that i think that's the least of our problems with this <laughs> true true <laughs> i also feel like she didn't try very hard to get rid of to like make people look like she didn't try very hard not to let it look like she was talking to like the dead ghost, like the guy who was still sitting in the body, like not dead. She's like, get out of the bag. <laughs> and they're looking at her like she's crazy. She's like, get the fuck up. And they're like, bitch, what are you talking to? Yeah. But she didn't and get she, on her phone sometimes. Yeah. And then she would get mad when they was looking at her like that. It's just like, obviously they can't see. So what do you expect? Yeah. It's like looking at somebody and going, yes. And being mad when they go, what? <laughs> it was just very weird I don't know Sneak said Amber got her own little boyfriend is it is it Angel that's the only person I can think of who would be in Amber the little oh that's what you're talking about the the. are you talking about the ghost who was sitting in his back seat that, wasn't she 12 or something I don't know I'm really confused I thought she was like 9 yeah I'm confused I don't know but that get puberty what's going on like, oh, <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. The uh she's talking about uh Charlie's best friend, the teenage daughter that was flirting with the cops when they were over in the house. Uh, and it was the cop flirting with her? Yeah, he was flirting back with her and Charlie mentioned it in her narrative and then they're like, Man, whatever, she's a preteen, she just wants to flirt with people. I'm like, but he was flirting back, like what the fuck? Uh, I remember- alert. Yeah. I, I, I just skimmed through that part because I don't remember that scene. I'm sure mm-hmm. it happened. Yeah, I do remember it. I remember going, what the fuck? I don't remember why the cops are in the house, because swear to God, Charlie got her ass beat every chapter. But they were in the house. The the husband came to try to shoot her, probably. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. probably. Another, okay, so that brings up another thing I had a problem with. The fuck is with Rhea is just, like, disconnect the people's spinal cords, and nobody ever (laughs) seeming to go, this happens a lot around this bitch. Yeah, like, that's just, like, his one move. (laughs) Snap. I thought that was so fucking corny. Just like, I'll, I'll sever your spinal cord. Shut up. <laughs> and then the one time like it actually cut Charlie and that shit, I laughed. I thought it was funny. It's like, this, see, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. This is so fucking wild. Okay, let's see. Latasha said the high school grandma scene was really cute. I don't know what that is either. Um, the grandma was uh, working at the school, and her like niece or not oh. daughter was like still in the office. Yeah, that was cute. Oh, I found this little note. It is like a lily pad. Yeah, they didn't explain it. I was waiting to find out why that was significant. They never said anything. It's like, mm. and that there was, was a cute moment. It was. It was. Yeah. Like, there were some times, like, she really genuinely helped people, and I really appreciate it. But, again, like, a lot of them she genu- she generally ended up ruining by just, like, saying something really stupid. And was like, all right, that's enough. Uh, that reminded me of a, another one of my favorite parts when the three lawyers first, you know, when they was dead. Hmm. And Barbara came up, they was like, oh, do you need to tell anything to your family about, you know, 
let them know how you felt. And he was like, my mom, I already know how I feel about her. I hate her. And I was just yeah. dying at that part. Because I, was, I wasn't expecting that at all. So I was yeah. just like, wow, okay. Yeah, because Charlie was like, yeah, well, you know, your parents usually do know that you love. And he's like, no, I hate that bitch. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he's like, oh. He's like, no, it's okay. She hates me too. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> what was with the one ghost who his wife died and he was you know being really sweet and really worried and a little you know didn't want to let go but then like two seconds later you'd be like charlie yo you gonna show me your boobs or what like you make out my wife like right what's with like, all these horny ghosts like, yeah like, like why why did they all want to fuck like i'm I don't, pretty sure they got other shit to worry about like yeah but also like, they don't have the parts like i don't see <laughs> why, why they would have the desire to do that <laughs> it was so weird it was so weird Let's see. Um, oh, Sting also says that the rocket thing that he comes together, but it doesn't get explained. I was like, that's whack. Um, right, everybody's name who dies for some reason. For some reason, yes. Yeah, thinking so, we found out whatever the hell, and it was like the dumbest trope ever because Reyes is supposed to be it's the son of Satan and something else, I think, and then she's supposed to be like some like goddess of light or the dawn of time or some thing. It was like a light and dark, stupid, it's like really fucking dumb. I really don't know why. I mean, I'm going to read it again and probably regret it, but yeah. <laughs> you could just do like a whiskey review, like the Salt Bay review. Yeah, like I genuinely try not to hate read stuff because it physically is painful, but <laughs> I may have to read the rest of this one. Oh, speaking of which, okay, so I don't know who all is watching this that did not know about the Twitter page. So now we all have a twitter page for the book club that we all have access to and i'll try to be um have it so that we're making announcements yep lost you push back or hey the live show is going to be this or hey the book's going to be this so lauren okay it's not just me then uh lauren we lost you for a second uh oh so go. anyway, we're saying the Twitter channel, Twitter channel, Twitter page <laughs> announcements, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> more announcements on it. Come follow us. Maybe we'll like do random, random updates of like where we are in the book and stuff. It'll be like kind of fun. Yeah. I was thinking that we could do like some kind of reaction thread, maybe like non spoilery because some people wait till the last week, <clears throat> me, to read the book, but maybe I'll try can, to. can only talk about the book in, 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 in GIFs. <laughs> I would love doing that. It's just like page 53 and it's just like a guy going ah, or something, you know? That'd be great. I love doing that. But we all have access to it. So check there because I'm not going to keep like posting a whole video just to say, hey, live show is going to be this because child, Lauren's lazy. So <laughs> also, um, eventually I would like to do some kind of giveaway or like little contest polls and stuff. But trying to get them on goodreads because when i first started this everybody was like yeah let's just do goodreads and everybody joins the goodreads thing but then nobody ever answers it so i had all these like chats and shit set up for the books and nobody would ever say anything I'm like there's a hundred of you jerks and nobody's commenting thanks just kidding just kidding but i feel like twitter's easier and twitter's quicker and just people are more online with like twitter than they are with goodreads so yeah we're gonna try that and the next, I think we have, what day is it? Sunday? So tomorrow is the last day to vote for the book for February. And we all picked, I think, some pretty cool books. I think all of us picked Afro or Afro-Latin characters. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know about the one I picked, but. I think it looks like the one you picked is winning. Yeah, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I haven't checked on it. Yeah. Yeah, it takes place in Mexico. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a POC author. It works. Yeah, we're good. Tried to stick a little bit with um, um, like the Black History Month ish, or just at least people of color, because y'all trying to find the uh, Black Urban Fantasy books is a struggle. <laughs> it's a struggle. Yeah, I was going through lists for like hours, and I was just like, okay, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think um, what we'll do, because uh, some people will probably vote on both is average out the both but i know the goodreads one is going to stop tomorrow and the twitter one should stop tomorrow and then instead of doing a goodreads uh i mean a 
Goodreads announcement and video like I've been doing. We're just going to announce on Twitter. The voting is on Goodreads and Twitter. So we're just going to announce on Twitter which book won. And I'm trying to switch over to Twitter because Goodreads is kind of a pain in the ass for trying to hold discussions and stuff. So we'll try to keep it like more Twitter with a little bit of Goodreads. Yeah, I don't like their, how their replies go because it like quotes the whole thing and it's just obnoxious. Yeah, and then it still doesn't let someone know necessarily that you replied to them because sometimes exactly. people quote reply mine and then I never get an alert for it. So. Yeah, you have to have like the alerts for the whole page or something set up and I yeah. don't have time for that. So Yeah. <laughs> Plus like if everybody does get into it, like on Twitter, eventually Twitter will just like compress all of the alerts. But Goodreads will want to send you like an email with all of them shits in it. And I'm like, nah, dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't check my emails that well. I suck about it. But Twitter, I have the good reason the book club Twitter now so that it comes to my phone. And then Amanda and Brandy and I all have the password. So any of us can be in it on any given time. I have to remember because I suck at Twitter too. Yeah. It's okay. I had to literally set it up so it came on my phone. So now I have my Twitter, I have the Blackathon Twitter, and I have this Twitter. So I get an alert, and the only thing is that it doesn't tell me which one. So I'm like, who is this person? What the hell are they talking about? And then I look at the Blackathon <laughs> tweet. I'm like, oh, whoops. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, like Tabby saying she really goes on Goodreads. I used to use it religiously, but now not so much anymore. So hopefully with Twitter, we can get more people. So check Twitter because I know a lot of people have been going to Goodreads. Goodreads is going to be slower with that. Yeah. So, Twitter will have the live. Twitter stuff. is at Book Spirits. Mm. Yerp. I can't wait. So, um, plus two, since we all have different work schedules and work different days, uh, Twitter will be the place to find out if the live show got postponed or, you know, so on and so forth. And then also, I think I will hope, like at any given time, if ever we're having a crazy reaction to something we just read in the book, it'll likely be on the Twitter too, because Goodreads is just taking too long. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all I got. What about you guys? Yep. I think I, I, think I got over it or talked about everything I needed <laughs> to get out. <laughs> Yay. I just wanted to bitch about Reyes to people for like a minute, and I did. So I feel good about it. <laughs> <laughs> So, like him, I don't get it. I just, yeah, I don't. I think it was just a forced, like a push narrative a little too much, and then it was obvious that it was getting pushed. So it was just like, Meh. yeah. Um, but so the next one, the next live chat. So we'll just try to go, I guess, in alphabetical order. So the next one we'll do on Amanda's channel, and then Brandy's, and we'll just round robin like that. So. We don't know what the book is yet, so I can't tell you. But don't look to my channel for the live show because it'll be on Amanda's. But So you got to follow all of us so you can get an alert like you did for today when the live show pops up because I forgot yesterday to mention on Twitter that the channel was going to be – I mean, the chat was going to be today until like halfway through yesterday. I was like, whoops. So. <laughs> and hopefully I'm feeling better So because I, I meant to post on like Instagram because that's my go-to app, but – God, yeah. Instagram takes so much effort. <laughs> I've been being lazy and I just share Latasha's uh post because she like tags us and all the stuff. So I usually just share it on there. Like, look, go check us out here. Am I following? <laughs> I, posted, I posted a picture today, like right yeah. at 30, <laughs> right before the chat started. Yeah, and see, I didn't even post the picture. I like forget that I have and instagrams i don't know just and then this dog has been wearing me the hell out it's my dogs and i having separation anxiety issues and i may actually have to rehome him because i can't leave him home alone and he's tearing up my fucking apartment every day it's been like hours when i get home cleaning up behind this dog and it's just kicking my ass so i've been using like what's easiest to use which is twitter which is why i haven't been on anything else but now it's like i'm hopefully gonna be held accountable like this morning i was like man i feel tired i really need to i was like yep i need to get up so <laughs> yeah i'm trying my best with instagram i'm like i don't know how to make pictures cool and then i'm like i, I overthink it i'm like i need to make all these little things and it has to look cool and i'm like most bookstagrammers they just put like a book and like one thing and they're like ta -da. and i'm like yeah. oh. I could put like a book and a candle together. I think I got caught up in all like the big books of grammars that like stack all these books all like twisted and wonky and cool looking and then they have like a post every day and I'm like I did yeah. that like one time with all my Sherilyn Kenya books and then I was like I gotta fucking put these back on the shelf. 
fuck. Yeah. I'm not fucking with that. I don't yeah. <laughs> That's why I've only posted one picture so far this year. I was like, I'm going to post at least once a week on Instagram. Yeah. It hasn't happened. Jesse from um, Bowties and Books has been posting some really like aesthetically fucking awesome looking um, bookstagram pictures and they've been matching like their bow ties with the aesthetic of the book and that shit's just been incredible and I'm like you just started Instagram I fucking hate you <laughs> <laughs> well Jesse has like a niche like yeah going for her. yeah but yeah. Jesse's also has like I don't know it's just I don't know they got their shit together really good I, I like watching looking at their um bookstagram pictures eventually I'll get it back together I sure got enough goddamn books <laughs> But yeah. I try to take pictures of my books as I start reading them because then I have something to post. Yeah, I should I should do that. And I used to, especially with like the am reading and the currently reading hashtag, but I've started doing it on Twitter. But book Twitter is getting a little toxic. So I think it's time oh, for me yeah. to like step back from there because people pissing me off every day. Are you, I got blocked. <laughs> I got my friends blocked the other day. I'm like, you was tweeting me. How you gonna block me? I didn't even say anything. Whatever. Anywho. Um... So yeah, I think that is all I got. Go follow the books Twitter, the book club Twitter page because <laughs> gonna be switching. I'm tired, Jesus. We're gonna be switching you had all that books. whiskey too early in the morning. <laughs> no such thing. No such thing. But yeah, I know Brandy got to go night night, and we just hold her hostage at this point. I mean, I'm good, <laughs> but I never know how to end these things. So. Yes, go follow us on Twitter, and we're trying to switch mainly over to there. Still stay in the Goodreads group, though, because I like knowing how many people are included. So when y'all don't vote on the book, I can tell when there's like 150 <laughs> members and like 12 <laughs> votes. Members over there, and only 40 people voted. Yeah, like, come on, guys. Or <laughs> some people majorly just don't care. That's fine, but. Yeah, they'll read whatever. Yeah, so um, I know some people don't like Goodreads, and some people don't like Twitter, so that's now why the polls are on both. And we're hoping for a better book for next month. I think, actually, this was my pick for the month, so I'm sorry to everybody. <laughs> but it's been, that was my pick for Halloween, and it didn't get voted on, too. Okay, so, so, like, I had – I put it up there before, so it's all good. And it, we can't beat, like – I don't know what month it was where I had just, like – I didn't even read um, Angel Fall, and then I think it was uh, – Was it written in red? Written in red, I did read, but I never got to do the chat because I just got like super shitty feeling and I didn't do any of that stuff. And I think oh. actually this month I'm supposed to be reading that other book. Oh shit, The Priory of the Orange. What's it fucking oh, God? We never did read. I, uh, I didn't read uh, Song Rising. I just put it back on my show. I didn't even read the second book. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Also, like, let us know on the Twitter page if when we do series. If you just want to read like the first book and be introduced to a series or if it's a series that you like, if you want to follow along the whole series with like uh, the book club, go back to two books a month, one book a month. Like, let me know all that stuff. And it's easier to keep track of on good reason. Eventually, um, hopefully, like we can all think of some good hashtags that help us keep track of that shit, too. But yeah, I think I've now brought up book Twitter like 72 times. So <laughs> get off this mofo. Cool things are coming with what we're yes. getting at here. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Now I'm super, super excited that it's not just me anymore because this time is fun and there was like multiple opinions and it's great. I love it. It's what I wanted it to be. So high five for that. Yay. Um, Ooh, yay. High five. <laughs> so, all right, guys, thank you all for watching. We're going to close this out and see you for the next one. Bye.